when you think of Doug and uh, all he has done for Grand Valley over 38 years, uh, I consider him the consummate employee. Doug gives his, his all regardless of what he does, whether he's teaching or training or coaching, he gives, it, gives his all. But that's why Grand Valley is so great, is because people like Doc are the people that put in those hours, you know, it's like Joan Bond, that put in all that time back when Grand Valley was growing and we're trying to define who we are and, and do it on little money and little resources. Um, you had to have people like that that were just willing to go all in. Doug Woods came to Grand Valley State University 38 years ago. Affectionately known as Doc, he was the right man at the right time when the athletic department was in its formative years. Times were changing in the mid-70s, and a person with the right sensitivities and work ethic was needed. I had not heard about Grand Valley State. Luckily, one of my uh, uh, friends that went to uh, University of Toledo when I was an undergrad, uh, Dan ended up coming up here and finishing his degree, and I was kidding him. I said, hey, when you, when you hire a full-time trainer, give me a call. So he did, and the next thing I knew, I was up here. We had not had a full-time trainer, and the trainer we had um, worked part-time here in someplace else uh, and didn't have much feeling for the women or anything. But when Doug came in, he was an athletic trainer. He knew what needed to be done, and he did it. Women were not second-class citizens in his training room. Uh, it was always first come, first serve, and he treated those women just like he treated the men, and uh, it was a wonderful thing for us. I think probably the biggest reason uh, Doug has been successful is his tremendous work ethic. Uh, he works very hard. You know, I arrived at Grand Valley in 1996. I couldn't believe we had someone that was both head athletic trainer and head softball coach and doing well at both. Doc spent his first 14 years as the head athletic trainer while also running the athletic training program in the classroom. He became the head softball coach in 1991 while still keeping his job as the head athletic trainer, doing both for eight more years. So he, he did a dual role for eight years and, and it's hard doing either one of those jobs, let alone doing both of them, and he did both of them very, very well. Current assistant coach Dana Callahan was a student athlete on the team when Doc first took over as the full-time head coach. He was the third head softball coach in three seasons that she had played for. When he told us the, at the banquet between my junior and senior year that he was staying on, there was just a lot of, a lot of joy there and, uh, just to get some consistency because my class had three coaches in four years. Doc brought more than just consistency. The seven-time GLIAC Coach of the Year has led the softball team to 11 NCAA tournament appearances and two Division II College World Series berths. Going into this season, he had totaled 859 victories and owned a 691 winning percentage. You know, you, you can be a great coach, but if you don't have the players, uh, it's going to be very difficult. So we spent a lot of time, you know, trying to get the players that could help our program. Success at the college level requires a tireless devotion to recruiting, miles on the road, and hours in the car leading to small towns throughout the Midwest to find the right student athlete for your program. He leads by example for, for a lot of people in this program. I mean, he's always in his car driving somewhere. For somebody who is, has put as much time as they have in their program and in their career to still be passionate about getting in the car and driving to middle of nowhere to watch a softball game, uh, you have to admire. When I go to summer ball and, and watch travel teams, I want to see the girl that's taking ground balls before the game in 95 degree heat with a big smile on her face because she wants to play uh, rather than sort of going through the motions. Th those are the athletes that I'd like to see in our program and those are the ones that are going to be successful. You also have to give a lot of credit to Linda, his wife. Uh, you know, she's been home a lot alone while he's been a head athletic trainer, uh, taking care of student athletes all those years, taking care of things at home while he's been recruiting softball games. Uh, and Linda's been a big part of it at all of our Grand Valley softball games, keeping the book down the left field line. So when I get home, then she can question every decision I made during the game, which is great. You know, that's been a big part of his success is Linda 
the support she's provided. She's been right there, been very supportive of it, uh, and she enjoys enjoys the game, enjoys uh, being around the, the players, so that's been very helpful. From the get-go, you know that he cares, and just in the way he even recruits and the kids he recruits, he wants the team to actually mesh, and it's important to him that the players get along too. Like, he wants them to get along. It's not always about getting the best athlete, but it's getting the best all-around person, like academics, um, personality, and athletic. Our softball teams have performed tremendously well in the classroom, as good as any. And Doc has always put that first. We have had so many softball players here that have had majors, whether it's in the health sciences area of nursing, PT, and so on, and they've had to do other things as part of their curriculum or to get a job and they've missed games, they've missed practices because Doc has always insisted that is a priority and that comes first. We tell them when we recruit, your degree is what's gonna help you after uh, uh, college. You know, softball is great and it's fun, but basically it's sort of finished. Fast pitch is finished when, when your college is done, so work hard as heck on the academic part of it. Uh, you know, in, in this day and age, you know, it's, it's gotten so competitive, not did you just get a degree, but what was your grade point, you know, and uh, along those lines. So we really stress that with them, and, and what happens is you get your upperclassmen that sort of show the way academically, uh, you know, even this year. We've got some of the seniors that'll reserve a study room over in the, in the new library, and they'll bring the freshmen with them over there to study. So it, it, it sort of follows and snowballs on that. And they take a little bit of pride in it, too. It's not, you know, if you can't make practice, you have class, go to class, you know, because, I mean, softball actually did come second. I mean, you gave everything you had when you were there, but he wanted you to go to class. He wanted you to get your degree, and that's, you know, that's what you were here for. Doc seems like a well-balanced, even-tempered guy who has everything in perspective, but there is more to Doc than meets the eye. Internally, he's one of the most competitive people I've ever met. Uh, you know, he's such a calm demeanor when he's walking through the hallways, and but he's a competitive, fiery guy. Uh, my freshman year at Gannon, um, and so I was still kind of feeling things out as far as, you know, what was going on, and we, we just weren't playing super well, and the umpires were definitely not helping the situation and I was pitching it was probably one of my first games pitching um, and one of the umpires just made a really bad call at home plate and Doc just stormed right out there and was just kind of yelling at him used you know a couple couple choice words but he's usually pretty good about that and and the umpire just said you know what you're gone and <laughs> Doc kind of took his time walking away and he was still kind of rambling a few things and I think the funniest part about it was yeah, you know, the umpire said, okay, you need to leave now, you need to leave. And Doc just turned around and he said, I got time! And he just kind of like stuttered through it. And I think every one of the players on our team was just kind of like, do we laugh? Do we not laugh? Because it was so funny. And then he just went and sat in his car down the road <laughs> for the rest of the game. Uh, after my playing career, I became the head softball coach at Ferris State for 15 years and competed against him. The ongoing running joke when I was a coach was could we get Doc to throw his hat? Because we knew we had him when we got him to throw his hat. But he's also been tossed out of a game and then tossed back in. And I'm not sure coaches have ever done that before. He threw his hat and the umpire threw him out and he says, I threw my hat, what's that got to do with you? And he says, okay, you can come back. Kim Biscup was another one that was a, a very good athlete for us. And uh, I still remember one time, Kim was sick as a dog, sitting and wrapped up in the corner of the dugout. I was all huddled up, I had a pillow actually on my belly and sitting there and Doc came in and he goes, Kim, you think you can hit if I need you to? And I looked at him and I never wanted to let Doc down, even as a freshman. I was just like, um, let me go see. I said, I think I can do it, Doc. Got up there, sort of, you know, you know, walked to the plate slowly. So I went in there and I knew the first pitch I was going to have to swing it because I could barely hold the bat up. And I swung and I hit it and the run scored and I'm running to first. And our first base coach at the time was telling me to go second, and I just stopped there and was like, you're kidding. And so, um, but yeah, it's one of my memories that I was like, I just knew right then that um, my freshman year, I, did, never, I want, did not want to let Doc down. He already did so much for me um, starting then that I wanted to always make him proud and kind of do everything I could. And just the second game, she went back into her blanket and covered up in the corner again. But, uh, um, you know, she was, she was a competitor 
you know, that, that's the great players are competitors, and we've had a lot of those people. They just want to compete like heck uh, when they're on the field. Doc has had many great players and great teams in his 24 seasons as head coach. The 2002 team, led by three-time GLIAC Player of the Year Jen Maxson, won three games at the World Series before falling in the national championship game. Arguably the 2002 team was the best in school history as it finished as the number two team in the country. But last season's team may have been the best offensive unit, highlighted by two-time Division II National Player of the Year Katie Martin. The 2013 Lakers went into Indianapolis and beat the number one team in the country to make it back to the College World Series. Uh, you know, we split down there 1-1 going into the final game and uh, we brought Sarah Pitched and uh, did a great job. They had uh, up by one run, runners on first and second with their uh, GLIAC Player of the Year up to the plate and uh, to say I was nervous would be an understatement. Do you pitch? Do you walk her? We pitched to her and she lined out. Indianapolis was number one team all year, uh, so that was just a great win, and then uh, to get to go to the World Series just added to that. Grand Valley State would not have grown into one of the highest rated schools in the Midwest and the top athletic department in Division II without the work ethic and leadership of people like Doug Woods. With his success at building the athletic training program and turning the GVSU softball team into a threat on the national level, he takes the most pride from being a mentor, an inspiration, and a friend to those he has come in touch with. Um, he's honest with everything. I mean, Doc is who he is. He's not trying to, you know, be this to one person and this, you know, and he said in doing three different jobs, I think that consistency that he had um, that carry, carried over from, you know, wherever he was in front of a classroom or in front of his teams. And I think, you know, he's someone that genuinely cares. Because now I have a better understanding about how he has been so good, how he has been able to recruit the quality student athletes that he that he did over all of his years. And then how when I, when I meet um, alumni from days gone by, there's nothing but good stories about their experience here. He has a, a very genuine um, personality, which attracts a lot of people to come here. And hopefully that's something that we can continue is to get players in here that are, are just as genuine as he is and genuinely love the game and want to play and want to do well. And, have a good, you know, feel for Grand Valley. He just was always willing to take the time and stop and do, you know, whatever he was doing to, to help you out or like I said, just have a conversation. He always felt better when you left a conversation with Doc. He's like a pioneer, you know, for our school. He's seen it, a, a, you know, change and evolve and develop and grow. And, um, you know, I think that that's a testament to who he is as a person. Yeah, both, uh, you know, as a coach and a person is to adapt to times as well. You have to adapt or die, and he, he has done that uh, probably better than anybody I know because of the longevity of his career. Uh, Doc has a very, appears to be a very easygoing personality. He's very humble, he's not arrogant, he believes in hard work, he understands hard work, he's willing to wear different hats, and he's been good at all of them. Doc would continue to be a mentor for me. I knew that I could pick up my phone and I could call him and be like, I'm going through this right now. Can you help me? And he continued to mentor, and even to this day, I know I can pick up my phone and call Doc, and he's there. He's just, you know, he, he doesn't just, you know, once you're, you know, four years are done, you're done, you're always gonna be a part of, you know, Laker softball to him. You hope that you touch their lives in some way, uh, that whether it was on the field or off the field, that uh, uh, you've helped them out. And the biggest thing, and we tell the girls, when you graduate, I want you to think back that that was a great experience. That, you know, I enjoyed that. That was, uh, you know, besides Grand Valley being a great academic institution, softball uh, was important to me and it was fun. Behind me we have the Director's Cup and, and all the trophies here in, in this space and softball has played a big part in that. Uh, we've been to the College World Series twice, finished second, finished third, and when you think of the number of great players Doc has coached, a number of them are in our Hall of Fame that, uh, you know, it's not only uh, his great work ethic and the great person that he was, 
he performed at a high level as a coach and we have a tremendously successful winning softball program because of Doc Woods. So thank you, Doc, for all you've done for Grand Valley.